Today I'm gonna to turn this into this. And because I've done a version of this build a hundred times before, let's make it interesting by then turning this into this. For this build, you'll need a volcano, a lightsaber, and a friend turned enemy who has the high ground. Kidding, kidding. You'll need this stuff. EVA foam, putty, paint, various glues, a voice modulator, or if you're on a budget, a pipe, just a pipe, L wire, candles, a helpful astromech shop assistant, safety gear, sanding tools, and scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First, I made the dome by cutting these shapes out of a sheet of EVA foam floor mat. These will form the basic dome shape. They're nearly identical to my standard helmet dome template template that I've used in some of my other builds, but the front is modified slightly because Vader has kind of a unique brim in comparison to any of the other helmets I've built. This is what half of it looks like. Since it's symmetrical, to get the other half, I reversed it and cut both of them out. Complete Vader templates are available in the description down below. Typically I try to hold the blade angled straight up and down so that the seams line up, but for the seam that connects the brim to the dome, you may want to angle it slightly so that the brim flares out more. When I was finished, I sanded away most of the pattern on my belt sander. This is because it could be visible from certain angles and I want to cut down on that. Oh, except right there. No one's going to see that, so I'm not going to worry about it. Then I heat formed all of the individual pieces using my heat gun. The brims don't need a ton of heat forming, just enough so that the large portion has a slight curve to it and the eyebrows, for lack of a better word, have a bit of a spoon shape. The dome pieces are a bit more difficult because they have to be curved along all axes, but all that means is you just got to spend a little bit more time shaping them. I like to place them in a bowl as they cool so that they retain their curve better. Then I glue them together using contact cement, being careful to make sure that all of my registration lines match up as I go. After letting it air out overnight, I hit it with another round of heat forming in order to even out the curves. Then I attach the brim, also using contact cement. You don't want to breathe the fumes from this, so I'll be doing all the cementing out in the hangar bay, aka the garage. Might as well be a hangar bay though. That's where all the TIE fighter maintenance happens. After that had aired out, I brought it back inside to continue working on it. I almost forgot this top band that I have to do. He's got this ridge in the center, which is actually amazing because it covers up a seam. So if this seam looks really ugly on yours, that's fine. It's just gonna get covered up. But to find the length, I'm gonna use this measuring tape. It's actually a sewing tool. We have 21 and a half, but as you can see, it's lifting in certain areas because I'm pulling it taut. So let's just do 22 for safety. I cut a strip of two millimeter foam and glued it over the seam. I'm using super glue here just for the convenience factor. I can get away with it here because this is a cosmetic detail. You don't want to use super glue on the main seams because super glue doesn't flex. And the, the whole point of a foam helmet is it flexes. It's less susceptible to the damage that comes from being dropped or packed in luggage that's essentially shot putted by baggage handlers. So if your helmet is gonna undergo that kind of stress and you have a super glue seam, it'll crack and break apart. All right, now I gotta fill in the seams, but before that, I wanna do a little bit of spot sanding with the belt sander and the rotary tool because if the light catches this just right, you can see that in some places these seams aren't totally flush, which is very common, but it'll save me so much filling and so much painting if I try to erase that before I start painting. So I filed those down with my rotary tool. That's just to showcase how obvious the difference in uh, the seam looks. Now I'm gonna put putty on only one side for photography reasons. Then I made the collar, which I think I can get away with doing in three parts. Going to start with the front two. I'm doing this on sheets of four millimeter craft foam, which you can get at craft stores, go figure. The reason I'm using this here over floor mat foam is because I don't want the neck to look too chunky. I heat form those as well. This is where a planishing iron would have really come in handy. Essentially a curved hard surface that you can press the foam over so that it'll take on that curve. But doing it by hand eventually worked. I glued these together. For the back of the neck, I'm going to use this off cut, I believe from the Daft Punk helmet, like the buck that I vacuum formed it. Eh, it doesn't matter where it came from. And I'm just going to fill out the spaces where it meets the front of the helmet or side piece, you know what I'm talking about, with these foam off cuts. But to make it easier for anyone who wants to build this using my templates, I'll reverse engineer a piece off of that. All right, let's get to gluing. I glued a sample of scrap foam pieces onto the back collar piece just to prevent light leak. If you really want to do the, you know, exposed back of the head version of Vader, then don't worry, I'll have a much more refined version of the back collar piece once I transfer it to my templates. I only glued one side so that it would come off easier. For the details on the sides of the helmet, I glued on thin half cylinder 
cylinder strips, again from craft stores, which seem tailor-made for this particular cosplay. As you can see, it took less than one strip, so I trimmed the excess. These strips are slightly too narrow for the back of the collar, so I went up a size for those. Now that the collar's done, I'm going to move on to the face. I start by building the pyramid shape of the nose vent, whatever you want to call it. For the curved part on top of the nose, I used a section of foam half dowel that I had hollowed the middle out of with my rotary tool as part of some previous build. I don't, I don't know, I think it was from the Space Sword or something. Then I made these side panels and then applied more half dowel tubing of a slightly smaller diameter. Then I cut a section from two millimeter EVA foam, which could be easily curved for the front cheek portion of the face. Because the thin EVA foam has no real structural integrity to speak of, I'm putting a strip of EVA foam behind the bridge of the nose for support. It won't actually be visible, but I think it'll help keep the helmet from looking lopsided. Not to mention I'm gonna need some surface area to hold the lenses. So this is mostly structure underneath. Cut out some eye sockets and the rest is gonna be flanging for the top of the cheekbones to sit on top of. And a little bit the bridge of the nose. So I'm gonna cut those out. I also put a half cylinder in between the eyes form the bridge of the nose. I glued more two millimeter craft foam over that. I refined the edges with my rotary tool. For the area around the eye sockets, I cut a curved piece. The Vader helmet is almost two helmets. Uh, helmet within a helmet. Helmetception. Well, I think the back of the inner one is exposed, otherwise we wouldn't see the back of Vader's head, right? But if you use the same dome for the inner one as the outer one, they're gonna have a tough time fitting together. So, I'm only making the forehead. I cut eye holes in it, heat formed it, and then glued it to the mask. The white is gonna take a ton of layers of paint to cover up, and he does have these little ridge details, so I'm gonna go ahead and give him a Bajoran nose here. Oh man, I'm mixing my franchises. Oh, I glued myself to my prop. Happens more often than I would like to admit. So it takes two strips, and a top and a bottom. I already put the bottom in there. Top is gonna be kind of difficult. See, most of this is gonna get covered up. Personally, I thought Vader's eyes were a little too wide. I mean, that makes sense for, you know, he's gotta have a field of vision inside this helmet, but it doesn't look intimidating. I kind of like the Macquarie version. So I'm gonna try and split the difference. Just to illustrate what I'm talking about here. Get in there. Surprise Vader, Mad Vader. Doesn't that look so much better? Gonna have to get it to seat properly in there. Like I think like this is how it is in the movies and this is how I would kind of like it to be. Although that's more of um, what are the robot troopers called? Dark troopers? That's more of a dark trooper type thing. Did I do it? Yeah, I did a dark trooper helmet. Not a robot dark trooper helmet. And there we go. I just put a little arrowhead type thing. I'm getting mad Bajoran vibes off of this. When I was finished with the bridge of the nose, I moved on to the interior details. Starting with the inset nose, which I replicated using a length of foam dowel. Then I inserted the vent baffles. There are supposed to be six, but there are only four that are visible, so that's all I'm doing. Next, I filled in the seams with DAP Alex Fast Dry Sealant. If you're lucky, you'll only need to do one layer of this, but I usually end up having to do three. When the putty had dried, I sanded it flat again, very carefully, alternating between using my rotary tool and my belt sander. I thought that he looked just a little bit too surprised, so I made the eyes a bit skinnier with craft foam that I had to sand with my rotary tool just because it's very difficult to cut a curve and then inset it into a curve and have it look symmetrical. And then because the eyebrows were too high, I had to fill those in with putty. All this is gonna need some amount of sanding before I paint it. Otherwise, the paint job's not gonna come out great. It's gonna be lumpy. Can you tell how much smoother that is? No. Okay, well just take my word for it, it's smoother. Oh, also I did some work on the collar because I felt it wasn't sitting right, but that's neither here nor there. When that was finished, I attached the collar that I had previously removed because I felt it wasn't quite resting right on my shoulders. I put a magnetic lock on it so that it would hold together while wearing it. The collar made the mask kind of difficult to work on, so I ended up just temporarily removing it. Now, I'm admittedly late to the whole Vader helmet build club, and I don't want to just rehash something that's been done a dozen times before. So to differentiate my Vader helmet, I'm going to add some active battle damage, which is definitely the real reason, and not that I lost one of the lenses. <sighs> Why do I keep building over ravines? First, I planned out where I wanted the damage to be. Then I cut it out. This hurts me more than you will ever know because I stabbed myself with a razor pen. Then I cut some L wire, that's electroluminescent wire, and set it into the edge of the battle damage and covering it with hot glue to seal it in. I also took the housing off of some electric candles and placed them on the inside of the mask to simulate damage to the helmet's electrical systems. Combined with the L wire, I'm hoping it'll look like the lightsaber damage that Vader received during his fight with Ahsoka in that one episode of Rebels. Then I painted everything gloss black. Well, everything except the L-wire, because this will have the effect of blacking it out, and then that negates the whole 
point. Again, this took several coats. You can't just glob it on, because if you paint too thick on curved surfaces, you'll get drips hardening into the final paint job. If that happens, you can usually hide some of those mistakes with more battle damage, but you can only get away with that so often, so it's best to try and avoid that problem altogether, you know? Battle damage should be a safety net, not a certainty. Pro tip, Daft Punk No Face Androids make perfect paint stands. And yes, this means you have to do more layers, but you know, what's that saying? You can't rush art. You know, people who've seen some of my early work can attest to that. Actually, I'm gonna get some off the lid. I think the lid is just a magnet for paint waste, you know? Like how many coats am I losing just a lid schmutz? And it's possible that the first layer is gonna reveal that you'll need to apply more putty. Don't be discouraged by that. It's better to discover a mistake now when you can do something about it rather than after the fact. An irony of the whole trying to avoid brush strokes is that if you watch New Hope and you get a good print of it, you can see the brush strokes on Vader's helmet. They're, they're very obvious. So I guess if this paint job doesn't turn out how I want it to, I can just be all like, ah, oh, this is a New Hope Vader. This is with just one layer of paint and you can see how the impermeable surfaces are shiny, whereas the foam ones are flat. It'll take a couple more layers to get this to look like this. But you don't need to do the interior. It is a good idea to do the edges that might be visible. So basically this area. I'm gonna do a little bit more, but leave a few areas blank so that I can use them as attachment points for the faceplate. When the paint had dried, I added rub and buff metallic finish to the edges to look like the paint job had been worn away by impacts. Also to cover the hot glue so that when the glow effect was shut off, it looks like melted metal rather than hot glue. See, L-Wire looks amazing in low lighting that you usually find at conventions, but if you're waiting in line outside conventions, the light doesn't really show through at all. So I'm trying to give myself options here. Not to mention when it's on, there's this high pitched tone, like basically what tinnitus is, and that, that can be irritating. It's like a tinnitus machine. I added thumbtacks for the details on either side of the vent. I put some mesh into the lower vent and I could call it done, but I've come across some more electronics that I think would really go great with this costume, such as this Vader breathing simulator. Don't know where this came from. I found something with this uh, Vader breathing gadget that I found truly horrifying. Not that it, you know, barely works, but that there's no batteries. How is this happening? It's Space Ghost, coast to coast. I put those in, attached all the helmet pieces, and I was done. And that's how you make a Darth Vader helmet. This video was brought to you by my patrons, the name scrolling by. So the Vader helmet is a build that I've been wanting to do for years, and it was only possible because of their support. If you'd like to join them so that I can continue to make videos of this quality, and even more elaborate ones, such as the giant TIE fighter, the droids, or any of the other builds seen flashing across your screen, then consider following the patron link in the description down below. Oh, where you can also find templates for this and other builds. Anything pledged goes towards improving the video quality, shop equipment, and allowing me to put together bigger and more exciting projects for you and the channel. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of those. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting. See you later. Ahsoka. I still think Angry Vader looks better.